Good morning and welcome to another offering of Church of the Holy Spirit online. Today we will be sharing in morning prayer. If you have a prayer book, we will begin on page 80 in the Book of Common Prayer. And if not, maybe you printed the service bulletin from our website, www.chsepiscopal.org. You can use either of these to follow along with the service. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us say together the Jubilati, found on page 100, or excuse me, page 82 in the Book of Common Prayer. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faith endures from age to age. Today's psalm can be found on page 686 in the Book of Common Prayer. We are going to say Psalm 72, verses 11 through 17 together. And if you don't have a prayer book, please feel free to, to use whatever translation of Bible you might have. Psalm 72, verses 11 through 17. All kings shall bow down before him, and all the nations do him service. For he shall deliver the poor who cries out in distress, and the oppressed who has no helper. He shall have pity on the lowly and poor. He shall preserve the lives of the needy. He shall redeem their lives from oppression and violence, and dear shall their blood be in his sight. Long may he live, and may there be given to him gold from Arabia. May prayer be made for him always, and may they bless him all the day long. May there be abundance of grain on the earth, growing thick even on the hilltops. May its fruit flourish like Lebanon, and its grain like grass upon the earth. May his name remain forever and be established as long as the sun endures. May all the nations bless themselves in him and call him blessed. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our reading today, first scripture reading, comes from Paul's first letter to the, excuse me, second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 2, verses 14 through chapter 3, verse 6. Paul writes, <clears throat> But thanks be to God, who in Christ always leads us in triumph and through us spreads the fragrance of knowledge of him everywhere. For we are the aroma of Christ to God, among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To one a fragrance from death to death, to the other a fragrance from life to life. Who is sufficient for these things? For we are not. 
like so many peddlers of God's word, but as men of sincerity, as commissioned by God, in the sight of God we speak in Christ. Are we beginning to commend ourselves again? Or do we need, as some do, letters of recommendation to you or from you? You yourselves are our letter of recommendation, written on your hearts to be known and read by all men. And you show that you are a letter from Christ delivered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Such is the confidence that we have through Christ toward God. Not that we are competent up to of ourselves to claim anything as coming from us. Our competence is from God, who has made us competent to be ministers of a new covenant, not in a written code, but in the spirit. For the written code kills, but the spirit gives life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Today, let us say together Canticle number 19, found on page 94 in the Book of Common Prayer, or in your handout. Canticle 19. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O King of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading comes today from the Gospel according to Mark. Jesus left Capernaum and went to the region of Judea and beyond the Jordan. And crowds gathered to him again and again. As was his custom, he taught them. And Pharisees came up, and in order to test him, asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of divorce and to put her away. But Jesus said to them, For your hardness of heart, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and a mother to be joined to his wife. And the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. And in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. And he said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And they were bringing children to him, that he might touch them, and the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them, for to such belong the kingdom of God. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not deceive the kingdom of God, like a child, shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands upon them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today, in our right remembrances of the saints of the church, we remember Frederick Denison Maurice. 
And here's a little something about him. In the same year that Karl Marx declared religion to be the opiate of the people, Frederick Maurice wrote, we have been doing, dosing our people with religion when what they want is not this, but the living God. Like Marx, Maurice wanted to solve the question of our complex society. Unlike Marx, he called for a radical but nonviolent reform by the renewal of faith in a God who has redeemed mankind, in whom I may vindicate my rights as a man. Maurice was a founder of the Christian Socialist Movement, which, he wrote, will commit us at once to the conflict we must engage in sooner or later with the unsocial Christians and unchristian socialists. Maurice was born in 1805 into the family of a Unitarian minister. Maurice studied civil law at Cambridge, but refused the degree in 1827 because, as a dissenter, he could not subscribe to the 39 Articles of Religion. However, he eventually became an Anglican and was ordained in 1834. Soon afterwards, he was appointed Professor of English Literature and History at King's College, London, and in 1846 to the Chair of Theology. Maurice saw worship as the meeting point of time and eternity, and as the fountain of energies for the Church's mission. He wrote, I do not think we are to praise the liturgy, but to use it. When we do not want it for our life, we may begin to talk of it as a beautiful composition. After the death of the Christian Socialist Movement in 1854, Maurice founded the Working Men's College and resumed teaching at Queen's College, London. Maurice awakened Anglicanism to the need for the concern with the problems of society. In later years, he was honored even by former opponents. He was rector of two parishes and was professor of moral theology at Cambridge from 1866 until his death. Continuing on page 96 in the Book of Common Prayer, or in your service bulletin, let us affirm together the words of our faith by reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Continuing on page 97 with the prayers. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us say together suffrage A, responsively. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. 
for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, who has restored our human nature to heavenly glory through the perfect obedience of our Savior, Jesus Christ, keep alive in your church, we pray, a passion for your justice and truth, that like your servant Frederick Denison Maurice, we may work and pray for the triumph of the kingdom of your Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O oh God, the author of peace and the lover of concord, to you is eternal life, and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite your prayers of intercession or thanksgiving at this time, either out loud or silently. Heavenly Father, as we gather today, giving thanks for our many blessings, we lift up those whose need is greater than ours into your loving care. Watch over those who suffer from this coronavirus. Bless them and heal them. Send your spirit of peace upon those who love them, who are worried anxious, despondent, that they may know that you are with them. And Lord, we ask that you watch over all the caregivers who are your healing hands and comforting touch in this world. Protect them. Be with them. Always. Amen. Let us say together the great thanksgiving found on page 101 in the Book of Common Prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies, that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. 
have a blessed day.